So for exercise number one, we're giving a we're given a little code snippet. Um, we have to guess what the calling convention is, but seeing or at least judging by the EBP plus A, EBP plus C, I'm guessing it's going to be either standard call or C decal. The exercise is to first explain what EBP plus eight is and EBP plus C, and so we need to explain a little about what the stack is and how it works. So normally. ESP is pointing to the top of the stack, which is a first in, first out data structure. And so whenever a, a call to a function is made, the instruction after the call is placed onto the stack. When you do push EBP, the, the previous base frame pointer is pushed onto the stack. So EBP would be somewhere up here. When you move ESP into EBP, um, they both point to the top of the stack and you know that way you can create your local variables and you know we can have a reference to the arguments and everything else i guess so that's kind of how this works so right here if um move edi ebp plus eight that would be the first argument so right here we're loading the first argument into edi second instruction we're moving we're, we're making a copy we're setting eax equal to zero and then the OR instruction. We don't know what ECX is, but we see all Fs, which means that all the bits are set. We don't really need to know what ECX is because it, it, only, it can only be one of two things. It can either be a zero or it can be a one. So in either case, the result is a bit. So <clears throat> that would mean that this is setting ECX equal to negative one. The next instruction is repeat, until not equal scan string and it's it's scanning a byte so the way this normally works is scan string or whatever it'll keep going it, it'll decrement ECX until it hits zero or well uh, for the not equal it's gonna compare whatever it scanned with EAX so it's gonna keep going until ECX is equal either equal to zero and it's gonna be decremented each time or until whatever it's scanned is equal to zero because eax is equal to zero so we we know that the the first argument has to be a string uh, because of this instruction here it, it's a scan string so i have this test you know test is passed to this function right now we know that edx and edi point to the same thing which is um the start of the string i guess and ecx is equal to negative one EAX is equal to zero. So the first time it loops, EDX is still going to point to the start of the, the string, but EDI is going to be incremented by one and it's going to be equals, it's going to be set to whatever it just scanned. And in our case, it's T or capitalized T, which is equal to hex 54. ECX is decremented, so now it's negative two, and EAX is still equal to zero. These two don't match, so it would loop through again. And ECX isn't equal to zero, by the way, you know. And it's never going to be because it's being decremented. But okay, so anyways. So on the second loop, ECX is set to negative three. EDX still points to the start of the string. And EDI is equal to hex 45, you know. No surprise there. ECX is on the next loop. ECX is negative four. EDI is equal to S, which is hex 53, and EAX is still equal to zero. Okay, next loop, ECX is equal to negative five, EDI is equal to hex 54 again, because it's T again, EAX is still equal to zero. And then, on the final loop, ECX is equal to negative six, because EDI is equal to the null terminator, which is equal to zero. So EAX and EDI are finally equal. So now it'll exit the loop. And as it exits the loop, ECX is set to negative six. The next instruction says to add two to negative six or to ECX, I should say. And that would set it equal to negative four. And then the next instruction says to ne negate ECX, which would set it to positive four. The next instruction says to pass the second argument into AL. So we know that AL is um, one byte. So we can assume 
that the second argument is going to be a character because it's only accessing one byte of EAX. So AL is set to the second argument and then EDI is set again to the start of the our string here. So this is we, we don't know what EAX is at the moment, but we're going to repeat um, store string byte. So what that's going to do is going to copy whatever is in EAX into EDI until EAX is equal to zero. And we know that EAX is set to four because we just did this operation here. And then we move EDX, which is the start of the string, into EAX. So in, um, what we're doing is basically copying one character into, we're overwriting the string with whatever character is stored in AL. So what that would look like in assembly it would look something like this. So I've got my main function here. All it does is print the, the, the string before our call to the function. And in this case, it'll print test. And then this is, this is the overwrite string, which is the function we just, um, you know, reversed or whatever. And I got my comments here, store pointer to the first character, which is source. Um, set ECX to negative one, loop through every character in source until null character. So pretty much what I just explained. And then I, I print a new line character and then I print the string after the call to the overwrite string. And let's open up all the debug and see, let's see it in action. Okay, so here's our start of our main function, F8, F8, F8. So this just, this is the print before the call which prints test and then here we're passing 78 hex 78 I should say which is equal to lowercase x F, um, now we're pushing our test string we're calling our function and then we're printing the new line character and then we print the result which is the string overridden and then it's over I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.